Start any minute now. It's him now, Eddie. Right. Yes, he's here. Nicholas Casu. Why didn't you come forward before now? I was in hospital, Monsieur. Kidney trouble. You only saw the photograph this morning. Oh. You're quite certain that this is the woman who visited your hotel. Oh yes, that's her. She came many times and, and always with the same man. Good teeth, tall, fair hair. Yes, if, if I saw him again, I, I'd know him. Hmm. What name do they give? Well, uh, uh, he called her Pom Pom and, and she called him uh, uh, Piero Pierre. We checked him on the rogues gallery, nothing. Didn't they sign your register? Well, it's only for an hour in the afternoon. Uh, look, I don't want any trouble. Well, that's up to the judge. Judge? I'm putting you up as a witness in the trial of Gaston Murin. Witness? I don't want to be a witness, and you can't make me. I know the law. Do you know the law about keeping a disorderly house? Article 9, Section 4, 70th of February, 1947. Remember? Oh, I'm a sick man. I've got to get to the hospital for me irrigation. You won't die. This woman's husband may. Why? Where does he come in? He is Gaston Muron. He's standing trial this morning for double murder. And maybe your evidence could get him off. All right, Le Point, take him down. 
Stand by for calling the court. Right, that's one. Now we're going to sort this one out. Time, time. Six months to set up a case, ten minutes before it starts, evidence that blows it to smithereens. Yeah. I've got to be the one to do the dynamiting. I've got to get an adjournment. Oh, this is going to be a field day for the press. Mm. Ah, I think. Yeah. You know, Kaju could be wrong or lying. Well, we'll have to take a chance on it. Muron's only hope. Yes? Good. He's on his way. They're waiting for you down in court. Right. Come with me, Luca. Right. Muron's wife is in the public benches, second row. Now, this is what I want you to do. Chief Inspector Megre! Chief Inspector Megre! Where is the witness? This is intolerable. Call him again. Chief Inspector Megre! You are Jules Amadé Francois Maigret? I am. You are not a relative of the accused or in his service? No. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to speak the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Monsieur le Président, my most humble apologies for keeping the court waiting. It was you, Chief Inspector, who directed the inquiry into the case which is now before us. It was, Monsieur le Président. Tell the jury what you know. On the 27th of September last year, I was called to an apartment on the second floor of 27B, Rue Manuel. Mm. I was shown two bodies. One, Leontine Favers, aged 67, who was the occupier of the apartment. The other, Cécile Perrin, a child of four. The woman had been stabbed. She lay on the floor. The child lay on the sofa, her face buried in some cushions. Yes, the magistrate's report confirms that the cause of the child's death was suffocation. Continue. The caretaker of the apartments told me that uh, Cécile was an orphan who has uh, been in the care of Madame Favet. Mm. Uh, she said further that uh, Madame Favet kept a large sum of money in the apartment. Yes, in a large urn, Chinese apparently, and filled with artificial flowers. Monsieur le Président. Yes, Maître Duche. If the caretaker knew where the money was, how could it be said to be hidden? Mm, it is a point, Maître Duche. Of great significance to the accused, Monsieur le Président. I should like to know how the caretaker discovered that the money was kept in the urn. Alternatively, if it was common knowledge, how many other people knew about it? You will have the opportunity of questioning the caretaker later. Yes, Maigley. Uh, Chief Inspector. It was the caretaker who gave the alarm the next morning. Uh, she used to look out for this child uh, when she left for school to give her sweets or cake or something. When she missed her, she went up to Madame Favre's apartment thinking the little girl might be ill. When she got there, the door was shut and she could get no answer, so she called the police who discovered the bodies. You were uh, questioned the other tenants? Uh, yes. One of them, uh, Madame Loris, saw a man leaving the building at approximately 5.30 in the afternoon of the 26th. Ah, yes. That was the uh, day before the uh, bodies were discovered. The medical uh, evidence shows that the deaths occurred between 5 and 7 p.m. of that day. Uh, yes, yes, Advocate General. I, I have it here. The witness described the man she saw. She said that he was wearing a navy blue raincoat, mm -hmm. which struck her as new. Also, she thought he had fair hair. She says possibly his hat was well pulled down over his head. Uh, that is so, Monsieur Le Tell the court uh, how you had occasion to interview the accused Gascon Meron. Came to see me on the following day after reading about the crimes in the newspapers. And what had he to say? He told me that he was Madame Favelle's nephew, but that he hadn't seen her since uh, January. And that uh, at the time of the murders, he was in his shop in the Rue La Roquette, where he's a maker of picture frames. I asked him about the Chinese urn, but he said he knew nothing about it. Uh, well, what else did he say? He spoke of his brother Alfred. He used to visit his aunt from time to time, but he hadn't seen his brother for two years. Oh, yes, investigations were made. It was found that Alfred Miron, the accused brother, had at the material time been playing cards with his friends at the eucalyptus bar near the Port Saint-Denis. 
You uh, visited the accused shop. I did, mm. and I spoke to his wife. Jeanette Bureau. Yeah. Uh, she was unable to help me about the movements of her husband because she had been out at a cinema. But uh, in other respects, she was more helpful? Yes, she showed me some clothes hanging in a hall cupboard. Among them were two men's raincoats. One of them, fawn, very dirty and old. The other, navy blue and apparently unworn mm. and stained with blood. I took that away for examination. Ah, yes, the blood on the coat proved to be of the same group as that of Madame Faber. And on this, you arrested the accused? Not at once. I pressed him further about his aunt's money. Mm. Uh, he told me that he was very hard up. A year before, he tried to set up his wife in a small restaurant, but that failed. At the time of the crimes, he was in debt to the tune of 2,000 francs. The debt was never paid, Monsieur le Président. I should like to point out the significance yes, of this fact. Yes, yes, Maître Douche. It has not escaped our notice. You will have the opportunity of elaborating the point later. Uh, finally... He admitted visiting his aunt on the day of the murders with the intention of asking her for a loan. Describe the uh, circumstances. He did. He said that on September the 26th, at some time after five o'clock, he finished work and got ready to leave. He put on his old raincoat, the fawn one which he was wearing, when he left home that morning. Ah, yes, this is confirmed by the witness Lombra, who called to place an order just as the accused was closing his shop. That is so, Monsieur Le Prison. Yes, yes, his testimony will be heard later. Continue. <coughs> well, the accused served Monsieur Lombra, then, according to his story, did not go home, mm. but he took a metro to the Rue Manuel. He says he found the door of the apartment ajar. He went in and saw his aunt and the child dead. What were his actions after this discovery? He closed the door and he went home. He got dinner ready and waited for his wife. She came home from the cinema about nine o'clock. Did he explain why he failed to inform the police? He said he was afraid. He thought he might be accused of the crime. Mm. Well, after that, I submitted my report to the examining magistrate on October the 8th and the accused was arrested the same day. Yes, and that concluded your investigations? No, Monsieur le Président. Mm. Silence. The court will remain silent. You continued your inquiries? Yes, Monsieur le Président. At the instigation of the magistrate? Uh, no, on my own initiative. Will you tell the court why? Monsieur le Président, I must object to evidence being heard that is not in the report. That is a matter for my discretion. Your report to the magistrate states that the evidence against the accused seem conclusive. Why, then, did you go on with your inquiries? Well, I don't really know why, Monsieur Le Prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, the evidence did seem conclusive, but there was something about this case that filled me with some personal doubt as to the guilt of the accused. Now, perhaps you would care to be a little more explicit, Chief Inspector. As Maître Duce has already pointed out, the caretaker also knew about that money. Caretaker is 71 and afflicted with arthritis. I really think we may eliminate her as a possible criminal. <laughs> <laughs> it struck me also that two other people may have known. Among them, the accused brother Alfred. But Alfred Milho had already been eliminated by your own inquiry. He had an alibi, but he also had a criminal record for larceny. So had the two men who said that he'd been playing cards with them at the time of the murders. You re-examined their evidence. I did, Monsieur le President. And found? Uh, that they were all telling the truth. In other words, the alibi stood firm. Yes, Monsieur le President. So you came to a dead end. Not quite. There is still the other person. The accused wife, Jeanette Miron. Oh, and uh, what did you do about her? I gave her photographs to my detectives and asked them to uh, investigate her movements prior to the crime. With what result? I learned that before her husband was arrested, she'd been in the habit of going to cinemas and dance halls. Without his knowledge? Uh, he knew about the cinemas, but not about the dance hall. <laughs> Silence. Silence in court. This is no occasion for laughter. These interruptions occur again. I shall clear the court. 
Chief Inspector, please proceed. Well, this inquiry also seemed to lead nowhere. But at my request, the police of the Saint Denis district continued to show her photograph in their area as a matter of routine. Mm. This morning, an officer visited a small hotel run by one Nicholas Cashin. He'd been in hospital for treatment since last September. The officer showed him the photograph of Madame Laurent. With what result? He identified it as that of a young woman who had paid repeated visits to his hotel throughout the previous summer. Can you tell us for what purpose? Oh, as to that, Monsieur le Président, I have no information. But the visits were always made in the afternoon, two or three times a week, and always in the company of a man. Silence in court! Monsieur le Président, you must not be a fool! Monsieur le Président, this revelation is of the utmost significance. I request an adjournment and the hearing of Nicolas Cajou and Jeanette Muir in evidence. Court will stand adjourned for 30 minutes. Chief Inspector Maigret, you will confer with me in my room. Yes, that's her. Inspector Dupois. Hello, 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 Maurice. How are you? Nice to see you again. Sorry to drag you all the way over from Saint Denis. It's all right. It's the Rue Manuel case. The Rue Manuel? Oh, that's the uh, murder of the old woman and the child. Huh? That's right. How's it going? Oh, well, no soon, I think. Sit down. I've got to thank you for some very good work in locating Casual. Casual? He's the hotel keeper who identified Jeanette Muron. Here she is. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's my Sergeant Caron you've got to thank for that. Good man for routine. <laughs> After six months' investigation, this is more than routine, this is devotion. Point is, he's opened up a whole new angle on this case. <coughs> she always went to that hotel with a man. She did? Yeah. Do we know him? All we know at the moment is that uh, he's a big fellow, mm. handsome, fair, about 30. Had good teeth, and he was called Pierre or Pierrot. And that's what I want to see you about. I've got to find him. Anything in the gallery? Nothing. Uh, this casual, reliable? Well, I think he's telling the truth. He knows that we can close his hotel. <laughs> Pierre. Pierre. Piero. Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. Do you mind if I use your phone? What is it? Now, there was somebody. Give me Police HQ Saint Denis. There was somebody. What the devil was his name? Um. Neil. <sighs> Milo. Oh, Toscani, De Poil. You remember that inquiry we had from Amiens last year? It's the breaking and entering job. So I know he had an alibi. What was his name? Mila. It's his first uh, name. Look, I want you to find Bernard. Get him to call me back at once, right? Mila. Pierre Mila. Who is he? Oh, country boy who thought that Paris was his oyster. We couldn't lay a finger on him. Ah, uh, that sounds like him. Attractive to women? Oh, fully equipped, yes. Bernard dealt with the Amiens inquiry. Right. La Pointe! They should have a photo and file on him. Yeah. La Pointe! Patron? Get me a police headquarters, Amiens, will you? Yes, Patron. Well, it's a long shot. Well, it's our only shot. Hello, Miguel. Patron? Okay. Jeanette Murat is just going into the witness box now. Right. Let me know what happens. And, Luca? Watch Miron's face when his wife is giving evidence. I think that poor devil would prefer the guillotine. Right. I'll keep an eye on him. We shall hear evidence from Nicholas Cajou that you frequently visited his hotel in company with a man. It's a lie. There was no man or you didn't go to the hotel? It's a lie. It's all lies. Turning to the day of the murders, September 26th, do you recall what your husband was wearing when he left for work that morning? Yes, his 
and grey suit and his old raincoat. A thorn raincoat? Yes. And when he went off that night to see his aunt, what was he wearing? What he always wore, his grey suit and his old raincoat. His dark new raincoat. blue coat? Yes, dark blue. So he must have come home to change? Oh, I suppose so. I wasn't there. Then how do you know what he wore? Well, I'm, I mean, he, he always wore I'll ask same... you again. What was your husband wearing when he went to see his aunt? I don't know. I was at the pictures. Thank you. You've got me all confused. When you said that about... You may stand to... down. Call Nicholas Casual. Nicholas Casual. Nicholas Casual. All right, Bernard, now give me the completest detail, everything you can remember. Um, yeah. Are you still there? Of course I'm still here. Now, how long does it take you to find a file? What was that? Broad bridge to the nose. Yes, I've got that. Hmm. Any marks? La Pointe! Yeah. They keep their files under the bed. All right. Now, how was he dressed? Of course, cognacs. Mm. Never mind. Just a, a general uh, impression. I suppose they're looking in the loft now. Flashy. Photograph. It's all over. Just give me a Good. Bow tie. Just a photo. Yes. What? Right. Mm, got that. Yes. Anything You've else? got it. Good. Now, what I, w I want you to do with the photo is... Fine. All right. Thanks. What? What do you mean, no photo? Old papers passed to Procurator Leon, January 1961. Yes, I, I'm sorry. Well, no, that's a good description. Thank you. Description. Uh, oh. Old bridge. It's very good. Well, we ought to be able to get pretty near it with this. The point. Go and see what you can make of that. Yes, but. All right. Now. Here we go again. Hello. I want police headquarters, Leon, no? And on each of these occasions, he was with a woman you have pointed out to us in the court. Yes. How many times? Altogether, uh, each week. What do you mean? Well, it was over several months. And several times each week? Yes. How many? About three or four times. Let me repeat that. You let a room in your hotel three or four times a week in the afternoon to a man you only know as Pierre or Pierrot. And on each of these occasions, he was with the same woman, Jeanette Mirand. Yes. Thank you. You may stand down. Mm -hmm. Advocate General, I don't know how long you require, but... I do uh, not propose to be lengthy, Monsieur le Président. Mm -hmm. If I address the court now, you may find it convenient to sum up this afternoon. I'm very much obliged. You may expect to reach a verdict without running into a second day. We have heard at this bar the evidence of some unexpected witnesses. But, members of the jury, the charges which weigh against the accused are still the same. And the questions which... Well, what do you think well, of okay. that? Not bad. Ah, Leon. Oh, Good. Not bad at all. A long time to get through to you. Well, have you got the file? Huh? It's been passed on? Oh, heaven's name, what is it about this file? What? Oh, you think it's been passed on? Well, would you be so kind as to check up, please? Yes, as soon as possible. Not at all. I'd be very much obliged to you. Thank you very much. Oh, Leon, I've been and lost a yard file now. I don't know. How are you getting on? What's this? From Milard's description. All my own work. Attractive to women. That's enough to frighten the horses. No, no. Now, until we get a photograph of Milan, we're chasing shadows. God, it's absolute fast and I can't get hold of this file. Apart from casual, we've got nothing to show that this man Piero exists. Oh, let's have another look at this thing. Uh, I wonder, what do you think? Well, it's worth a try. All right, Lapointe, have it photocopied. Show it to right. everyone who might have seen Pierre Milan or Jeanette's fancy man. They're the same person. Bernard, Cajou, Madame Loris, caretaker, even the children who play about in the court. Right, Patron. Uh, photographic department, please. I think I'll show it to Gaston's brother, Alfred, myself. You know me, Gabe? Hmm? Lucas? Right, coming over. The jury's out. Want to take a bet? Uh, 
After Kaiju's evidence, it was the only way it could go. Yeah. How did he take it? Here she is. Gaston, isn't it wonderful? That situation much. Gaston, wait for me. I'll get a taxi and take you home. Taxi? Taxi? Luca, keep an eye on him for a bit. Hello, Miguel. Patron. Good morning. Lucas. Good morning. Gaston left the house about six o'clock. Six? What time is it now? Just after eight. You've been there all that time. Oh, I'm sorry, Luca. I was in here last night, waiting, uh, waiting for that call from Leon about the Miard file. Must have dozed off. I should have sent someone to relieve you. Well, how's Gaston been going on? What's he been doing? Journey for the marathon, I think. He's walked for miles. He's been to two workmen's bistros, Café Cognac, Café Cognac. Then he went to a pawn shop. Now he's in his third bistro, Cognac. Mm. What do you want in the pawn shop? Oh, I didn't have time to find out. I didn't want to lose him. Mm. Where are you now? In a coma on the left bank near the Pont Neuf. What about the wife? As far as I know, still in the house. I see. All right, I'll send someone to keep watch, Luca. You go home. You go home to bed. Bed? <laughs> good. Uh, what about Gaston? I have a pretty good idea where he's heading. Judy Room. Patron. Who's that? Thomas? Yes, Patron. Come in here, will you? Right. Morning, Patron. Morning, Thomas. Now, I want you to go to the Rue Chamon right away. Do you know uh, Jeanette Meron? Oh, yes, I have seen her. Mm hmm. Well, I don't think that she'll move, but if she does. Keep on a tail, let me know what happens. Right. Oh, wait a minute. 
On your way out, leave a message at the gate. I'm expecting a visit from Gaston Muron. I'm not sure when, but I'm sure he'll come. When he does, I want him shown right up here. Yes, right? Petro. To Bordeaux? What for? Oh. This blasted Milan fire is absolutely driving me mad. Get on to Bordeaux before they send it to Madagascar. Yes, Mr. Tom. You me wrong to see you, sir. All right, the point. Yes, sir. You wanted to see me, Monsieur Mouron? Do sit down. Take your coat off. There's a chair over there. I suppose you think I've come to say thank you. You must be very tired, Mr. Miller. What you did yesterday in court. I've come to say I'd rather be in prison. What you've done, it's wicked. Please, sit Cajou, down. people like that. You can make them say what you like. So you did kill your aunt? And the child? You know I didn't. I don't know anything. I don't think you did. Because you see, there are a lot of children there, aren't there? On the stairs, and in the courtyard. Some of them toddlers like poor little Cecile. Well, isn't that so? Well, why don't you take your coat off, huh? No, thank you. You used to talk to the kids, didn't you? Oh, and the caretaker said you did. Sometimes. They come out of school at four. So after that time, your aunt will be alone. You wanted money. Even if you had to kill your aunt to get it. I did not kill her. Now, let me finish. If you had planned to kill your aunt, you would have gone round before four to be sure of finding her alone. Because you love children. You couldn't kill one. Cigarettes? Thank you. Either the murderer didn't know about the child, or he had some special reason for committing the crime at that time in the afternoon. What are you getting at? If he knew about the money in the urn, he probably knew about the child. All the same, the crime was committed sometime after five o'clock, because he knew that was the time you used to visit your aunt. And that's exactly what you did, isn't it? I found. I know what you found. Muro, that coat of yours, the blue raincoat, was it hanging in your hall cupboard when you left home that morning? Yes. Yeah. So if you didn't wear it to visit your aunt, somebody must have come to your apartment and taken it away and come back later to return it, this time stained with blood. But your wife was out. Yes. Then how did this someone get in? There was no sign of forced entry. He must have used a key. How many keys are there to your apartment? Two. One for you, one for your wife? I don't know what you mean. My wife was going about with a man called Pierre. It's just a liar. Pierre. Pierre.
him casual. She could have met him in your brother's bar, the Eucalyptus. She never went there after... After what? After I quarrelled with Alfred. Why did you quarrel? Because he was showing too much interest in her as well? Gaston, you know the truth about her. Why don't you face it? She's a good... Last night she told me she loved me. She's waiting for me. She loved you. She's waiting for you. Yesterday she tried to send you to the guillotine. No! No! Yes. I thought. She skipped Petron. Go on. Before I got there. The caretaker said she left about seven with a suitcase. Thank you, Thomas. Not waiting, it seems. Where's she gone, Gaston? Hmm? See Pierre? Gaston! It's all right. I'm not going to kill her. I know. And I'm not going to throw myself in the river. I know that, too. You came here just to find out about Pierre Millard, didn't you? To make sure. A man who could strangle a child, he'd kill you without thinking. We both want him, Gaston. But leave him to us. Yes, we both want him. But not for the same crime. Lapointe. Gaston Muir has just left my office. Follow him. Don't yes, let him out of his sight. Get a car to back you up. Like that, fool. Make it. Huh? Bordeaux. Right. At last. Well, have you got the file? You have? And the photo? Good. Now. No, 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 there's no time for that. This is what I want you to do. That's him. You're quite certain? Yes, yes, that's him. That's the man. Uh, Pierre, Pierrot. Right. If they won't give me the names, what can I do? Look, Inspector, you won't report me, will you? I'm a sick man and I've got to make a living. All right, all right. Oh, thank you, Inspector, thank you. Any more blanks in your book and we close you down, right? That's a promise. All right, all right, I'll see they put the names down. I don't want any more of this kind of trouble. Yeah. Okay. Patron, I'm just across the road from the eucalyptus bar. Gaston's in there. He is? Right, if he comes out, follow him. Report when you can, but don't lose sight of him. Right. Clarence! Patron! Call Luca and he's home. I want you to meet me in the eucalyptus bar. Gaston's in there. I want to know why. Yes, Patron. Tell him I was here. What do you take me for? Just wanted some money.
for you to talk. You didn't have to go through what I did last night. Ah, calm down. Come on, come on, have a drink. But he's looking for me. He'll kill me, I know he will. Which one? Pierre or Gaston? Oh, you're very funny. <laughs> you don't know what he's like. All last night he never closed his eyes, he never spoke to me, and then this morning he just went out. Well, I wasn't going to wait. That's your conscience. Come on, come on, have a drink. I haven't done anything to him. Oh, not much. You didn't tell Pierre about the money. You didn't give him the key and tell him how to get the ring. Oh, girl. shut up! <laughs> you can talk to me like that after what you've done. <laughs> What am I going to do? He wanted it rest here. You know, he'll be back. I know he will. He won't. How do you know? Never mind. What have you done? Wake up, baby. Why should you care what happens? Put him on to Pierre. Gaston gets Pierre. The police get Gaston. That leaves you and me. Just like old times, eh, baby? Leave me alone! <laughs> Leave me alone! Yes, boys, go! Yes. Who's there? Police! Open up! Get in there! If they find you, put it my way! You don't know where Gaston is, or Pierre! Open up! All right, all right, I'm coming! Oh, it's you, Inspector. Why are you closed? Well, can the man have a bit of shut eye? What can I get you, Inspector? What did your brother want? Guess so. I'm glad you asked. Nice of you to pass on the message. We're friends again. Of course, I knew we would be, after all. A brother's a brother. Does he use lipstick? What? One of the girls. You know how it is, Inspector? I'm beginning to. You wouldn't want to embarrass the lady, Inspector. Well, well. My sister-in-law. I know. Just a family visit. Have a family conference, shall we? What a pity Gaston isn't here. Does he know you're here? Yeah, I bet he doesn't. All I want from you, one little thing. Anybody know where he is? Anyone seen him? Hmm? Nobody knows? Piero, so that's who you meant. Yes, that's who I meant. Where is he? I wouldn't know. What have you got to say? She wouldn't know. She'd never see. Shut it. up! I'm beginning to get tired of you, Alfred. All right, I'll put it another way. Has either of you told Gaston where Pierre is? No, you wouldn't. But you. Well, Gaston here? No, he's gone. The point's on his tail. I check with the point job. He swapped his lot for a gun. Heavy build and automatic. Only two shells. God, that point's sticking his neck out. He's unarmed. The point. Pierre! Gaston will kill him, he'll kill him! Shut up! He did it! He did it! He arranged it all with Pierre and he's told Gaston where Pierre is! Oh, oh, son of a game, do you think we're playing? Yes, on you! Yes. Oh, I don't give a damn for your hide. One of my officers is in danger of his life. No. For the last time. This is the last time. Where's Pierre Millard? All right, all right. He's at Noisiel. The old house between the river and the canal. Death.
that's the point car. Yeah. That'll be the house. Excuse me, madame. They're both here. Pierre's out fishing. Gaston left for the river a few minutes ago. Are Jules Amadé Francois Maigret? I am. You are not a relative of either of the accused or in their service? No. Raise your right hand. Mm -hmm. 